Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Monday, October 30th, 2017 meeting of the Pembroke Board of Selectmen. And we'll start it off with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we just have one announcement here tonight, and it's uh, uh, Chief Wall confirmed that the National Grid um, put out some information today at 4 o'clock. Uh, it reports that there's 1,939 homes without power in Pembroke as of 4 p.m. today. The Bryantville area was the area that was the most hard hit, and... Uh, power is on in the center of town and most areas up north. National Grid crews are out working in Pembroke and have opened most roads. The crews are still in the assessment and tree clearing stage of what they may turn out to be a multi-day operation. Additional crews have been brought in from neighboring states and are staging in Brockton to be uh, deployed throughout the hardest hit areas. Residents can expect the uh, restoration of power to begin sometime tomorrow. Um, the Pembroke Library will be open Tuesday, October 31st at 9.30 for residents who need to charge their phone, tablets, and laptops. Uh, very first thing on the schedule is the chief, and uh, he would like to introduce uh, some new officers to the Board of Selectmen. Would you like to come in, chief? Are you still without power, Chief? Still without power. <laughs> Join those of us from Brian. But uh, in update, I saw uh, some National Grid crews on my way in here, and I talked with National Grid a little while ago, and they understand that we have a school, uh, a senior complex, a uh, group home, and the, uh, the New England Village is all without power in that area, so they're going to try and prioritize and get us some help down here and see if they can get that power going. So uh, we're in pretty good shape. They've got the roads clear. That wasn't that way earlier today. We're, we're making some progress. Um, so just kind of bear with us. Again, it's another uh, glad to be in Pembroke day. <laughs> <laughs> so back in July, we began the process. I came to the Board of Selectmen about increasing the permanent intermittent staffing levels for Pembroke, and, and I explained to, uh, to that we depend on the permanent intermittents. I mean, we um, put these men and women through the paces. They go to the Special Police Academy on their own, and they uh, they learn policing skills there. And then when they come out, they do 180 hours of on-the-job training in the police cruises with our field training officers. Uh, so they get to be pretty well known within our department, and they get to know the, the, the streets, and uh, um, they're all Pembroke people, so this really gives them a little bit more appreciation of their town. Uh, they've been to 911 school, which is another 60-something hours of, of uh, learning how to run the dispatch center. And then on top of that, they have to take the emergency medical dispatch training, which is another 24 hours of training. So by the time they get to this stage, um, they're very capable of working in a cruiser. And uh, we use them to work shifts to keep their skills ready prior to them going to the full-time academy. So I think what we'll do is... is uh, I'm going to introduce you to our newest acquisition, and I'll get back to my uh, part-time people because apparently Jax is a little impatient. Um, back in July, we also talked about the addition of a canine uh, unit to the Pembroke Police, and we were very fortunate to have Officer Mark DeGravio, one of our former PIs and full-time police officers now, had a, uh, a, a certified, ready-trained uh, canine, and we've been able to incorporate Jax into the Pembroke Police. Um, I never realized how important the dog was until I got involved in search and rescue. And they're the first ones out and they cover a lot of ground. And you say, well, how many people go lost or missing? We've had a lot between Pembroke Hospital, people with Alzheimer's, people with autism, and runaways. We, we have quite a few. So I wanted to introduce you to Jax. You guys are always seem to be on the outskirts of what we do, and I know you're fully supportive of us, so I want to make sure you see what we're doing. So. This is Jax. Uh, he's been with me since he was a puppy. Uh, I got him at nine months old. 
He's, uh, he just turned six. He has control and narcotics trained, so he's, he's uh, good for searching for people as well as uh, illegal drugs. And uh, we're trying to put him to as much use as we can here in town. Very vocal, huh? <laughs> yeah. I'll let you know he's around. He does this all day long when he's in the concert. It's interesting when he gets a radio call, it seems like every call Jackson's ready to go. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure Mark's always ready to go. Jackson's always yeah. ready to go. I always hear him chirping in the background. So. Probably wants to eat if he finds something in there, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, that's how he gets rewarded, so he does his work and then he gets to eat. Thank you very much. And, and again, uh, we've, we've increased. It's, it's great to have a patrol dog. Search and rescue, narcotics. Miss anything? No. Uh, well, uh, Semlex like SWAT team. Well. Mm -hmm. So we've really, you know, increased what we can do in the police department. And, uh, you know, they live together. They, 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 they share a car together. And it's an old one. But we'll take care of that Sunday. Start, start early. Awesome. Start cheap. That's good. I'm glad you brought him in. That's nice. All right. Good boy. Thank you. So I'll get back to our, our PIs. They just got sworn in upstairs as permanent admittance. And um, after all this, Mr. Thorne was part of our processing when we uh, we do the hiring, the background checks. It's civil service. They come off the civil service list. So they are eligible when we need to fill ranks. They're all ready to go. Uh, so our, our first gentleman is, is Justin Turvey. Justin is a, a Marine Corps veteran. And after the Marine Corps, he went down to Tennessee, and he went through the uh, police academy there, the Peace Officer Academy, and was a full-time uh, peace officer in Tennessee. Uh, when he moved up to this neck of the woods, he worked for the uh, Plymouth Sheriff's Department, BCI, for nine years. So he would come into our station, we were very familiar with the processing prisoners and helping us with all the crime scenes and stuff. So um, very fortunate that uh, Justin was at the top of the civil service list, and. Uh, He's now a full-time permanent, no, permanent admitting police officer, hoping to become full-time. He's on the uh, on our list. Our next gentleman is, is Mike McCarthy. There's Mike. Over here, hide behind me. Mike's a little shy. Uh, Mike's a Pembroke kid, born and raised here. Uh, went to Silver Lake before it was Pembroke. And uh, Mike runs his own business. I'm sorry, Justin's three kids. I wanted to mention that. Cause, uh, Family is kind of an important thing and why, why we do what we do. Um, Mike put himself through the Special Police Academy. He came in before there was any opportunities and he said, I really want to do this. Um, and okay, no promises. He went and did it and he was such a good kid, we decided to make him a special and, uh, and then he's, he's did real well in the exam and uh, he's put in all his time, runs his own business, and on top of that, he's a dad. Um, so, these guys are, are just sworn in as permanent admitting officers. Last week at town meeting, the town voted to approve for two full-time police officers. It's great to have a list ready to go. Uh, I'm glad to say that the next day, Mr. Thorne and myself were able to complete the entire process. They now have seats in the Reading Academy starting January 8th, Elvis's birthday, and uh, they're all ready to go. Um, it's all been taken care of. So. First candidate is Adam Barrows. Adam uh, was a PI for the last two and a half, three years. Um, he's been waiting his turn. He's, he's gone to the academy. He's gone to now one school. He's done all the things that he's got to do. Um, he's currently working for uh, at the airport at TSA up there in, in law enforcement capacity. And um, he has two kids. And uh, he's also born and raised in Pembroke his whole life. And finally, but not without, uh, we have Mary Beth Simmons. Mary Beth comes from a long line of police officers. Her father was Dick Simmons, sergeant on our job for a long time. He had the patience to put up with me for all those years. Her brother John is on our department as a sergeant. Uh, Mary Beth, Beth did extremely well on the uh, exam. She's gone through all of the other trainings, everything that uh, we need to do. Um, she's been on top of that. She's also worked with uh, the Boston Police and, and did some time in with the Brockton Police. She's got her uh, degree in criminal justice from Stonehill. I'm uh, sorry, you have your criminal justice degree from Bridgewater State University. So we have a great group of people. And this is why we need to continue to, to build up our fine team so that when we have openings, with 24 hours we can have them filled. 
and uh, I look forward to these guys getting their training in and hopefully they'll be on the road by May if everything works out right in the academy and uh, we'll move forward. So that's what I wanted to do, I wanted to update you where we are. Thank you for your support and I thank the town and you guys have very good campaigns. No, we appreciate it very much that you came in. It's nice to see the offices. Uh, some of them that have been put on, I don't even know what they look like. <laughs> so, I, I so that's nice. I took when you told me the last yeah. time, so I made sure that we're here. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Or I just and some of them didn't know me, because when I go bang on the door, they say, what do you want? You know, I open the door, you know. <laughs> Pretty much everyone knows you. <laughs> so thank you for your, for your time. I really appreciate it. Well, it, was, it was great that thank you brought them in. We appreciate that. Justin, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Michael, welcome. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Adam, welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Okay, please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15 and is being recorded for broadcast for future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. So is Nathan Jerome from 99 Restaurants of Boston here? I'll come right up, sir. things in order. Is there anything else that he needs to do? Uh, so he's all set here. Uh, we have a, anybody have any questions or comments or a suggested motion? Mr. Chairman, I'll move to grant the request of the 99 Restaurants of Boston's LLC doing business as 99 Restaurant and Pub for a change of manager for the Common Victual Law All Alcohol License number 00051 RSO960 exercised at 166 Church Street in Pembroke. And it is from Christopher Peltier to Nathan Jerome. Second. Right. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Five to zero. Thank you very much. Welcome, welcome to Pembroke. Every time you're in, just ask for me. I'm there all the time. That's so. yeah, right. Very good restaurant. We've been there a number of times. Okay. Good food. Vote to accept a land donation of 46.7 acres of open sp space parcel from Washington ARL off uh, Bryson Way and Bryson Way Extension, the assessor's map and parcel E. The Conservation Commission has requested that the board consider a vote to accept the land donation of assessor's possible E10 71A off of. Bryson Way and Bryson Way Extension, or open space lot located off Old Washington Street. Mr. Chairman, I, I, uh, on behalf of the Conservation Commission and the Open Space Committee, uh, I would uh, recommend uh, the board accept this donation of uh, some 50 acres of land, which uh, abuts um, at least a more recent uh, purchase of the uh, Nike property on uh, on Barker Street, and uh, that property which goes from uh, Route 14 all the way um, 
south to the parcel that is uh, being donated. So this would add uh, almost an additional 50 acres of open space to the town. Mr. Chairman, I would move the uh, recommendation of the town administrator. A second for a question. Um, we're now collecting real estate taxes on this property. I believe so. Do, do we know how much that is? And what other benefit is the town going to get for taking this land over? Is it just going to be open space for people to hike on? Or right. That's correct. Trails, that type of thing? It won't become a 40 B. <laughs> and, and to further that point, Arthur, uh, the land mass accumulated by the town uh, counts toward our 1.5% uh, of town-owned land uh, to guard point. us against the next one 40 Bs. Good point. Yeah. Unwanted 40 Bs. Good point. So I would, uh, my question is answered. I will second the motion. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? No. There's also um, a request for Conservation Commission uh, execute a quick claim deed. Does that need to be voted on it? Yes, sir. You'll be signing that. Okay, so that's just something we signed it on it, though. Take a special vote on that. Okay. <coughs> so we do need, uh, we have a recommendation from the police chief Wall to vote to declare the following item surplus property, a 2015 Ford Explorer utility VIN number 1 FM 5K8, AR7 FGA 88570. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, 2015 utility for any vehicle two years old is unusual to be declaring it surplus property. From past experience, is there a particular story behind this one? Um, I was talking to Sabrina about this, and I think that at this particular point, we don't have a use for this thing. We don't, and it's no longer under warranty, and the repairs that it's going to need will exceed yeah, I remember the cost the, of replacing the vehicle. Yeah, so the chief no has brought that issue before us on yes. why it's important to... It has to some useful life left, but it will, yeah. the repairs that it needs to be an operated police vehicle are accessible. Okay. Although, Thank you. Although it's only um, three years old, mm -hmm. it, I mean, you could run 100000 a year 24-7. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that could have 200 and some thousand miles on it. I don't know what the mileage is, but I'm sure that it sure could have. To your point, uh, the town administrator asked the DPW mechanics to review it because it was so young. And they confirmed that it needs far more than... Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would move to declare the 2015 Ford Explorer utility surplus property at the request of the Pembroke Police Chief. Second. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Aye, I said. Consider the appointment of Andrew Sullivan to the Town Government Study Committee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. move to appoint Andrew Sullivan to the Town Government Study Committee. Second. Any questions or comments? Uh, just that uh, Andrew has been very active uh, in town. Uh, he's been working uh, on the Community Center Committee, and he wants to join the, uh, this subcommittee also. Um, so we're willing to take um, every interested person that's that's available, and Andrew's going to be a great asset to this committee. I know it. And I believe he will be. We'll definitely be in favor of that. Good guy. Yeah, I'm delighted we get somebody of his caliber interested. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. No, have it.
uh, consider a vote to create capital building fund study committee. Bill, can I just say something brief on this? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I was a, I was approached by a few folks at a, a fall town meeting that mm -hmm. wanted to press <clears throat> press this board into making certain that a, a, a capital fund study committee uh, is is formed so that we have enough people that are involved from various towns, boards, and committees. Uh, that have interest uh, in, in the new buildings, the police, fire, and DPW buildings, that not only have interest in them, but also uh, have the energy and want to exert, exert the effort to help look for uh, funding, uh, whether it be grants, uh, state, federal grants, uh, examine the town of Pembroke's books to make sure that we uh, expend the monies that we can and any funds that we have handy, and then also alternatively look at uh, what any tax ramifications are, uh, proposition two and a half implications. And with the goal in mind to keep any proposition two and potential proposition two and a half overrides uh, to, to the minimum. So that's, that's the impetus of uh, why I asked you to put this on the meeting here tonight so that we can gather up the, the folks that not only have the interest, but want to exert, exert the effort uh, to help us, help the town administrator, town accountant, treasurer, the assessors, and it, every, it, it really is a, a group effort that's going to be required for this because uh, these are very large capital expenditures uh, that are on the horizon. So that, that, that was my impetus for uh, asking you to put this on the, the agenda okay. tonight. Um, probably would only be... Um be right then uh, to have you chair it until the first open meeting and then uh, they can vote a chairperson in there. I'd, I'd be willing to do that and um, I don't think we need to choose members tonight but we do need to uh, form the committee so that we can seek uh, interested people. I know there's some folks that are sitting here tonight that I would absolutely expect to be on the committee uh, so mm -hmm. make a motion to form uh, and create a, cap, a, a committee to study, study capital building funding options. Second. Okay. Any other statements, comments? Or? Well, I'd like just to make a comment. I certainly agree with Dan that uh, we all were at the town meeting and we heard the presentations from the three departments and uh, very well done, explained the need to the residents and uh, now we need to put that effort into uh, studying how we're going to pay for this. Uh, as Dan has said, these are very uh, expensive uh, issues that we have to deal with, but we need to deal with them. And uh, we need to get people who bring an expertise or a knowledge or just the desire to spend the necessary time in finding out what options are available to the town. And so uh, because of that, I certainly support this suggestion. Yeah, and one thing further for uh, the folks that are interested in it, you know, everyone on the advisory committee would be, uh, would be a great candidate. We can't have the whole advisory committee on it. Uh, same thing with the DPW and um, the point being is we need the committee to be manageable and effective. So what we need are representatives of various uh, boards and committees so that uh, the entire advisory committee, for instance, their voice is heard through a representative. So we need to make sure that we're not unwieldy. Uh, we need to be uh, efficient and effective. Um, but. It's also malleable. We can we can change if we need to. So uh, anyone that is interested, uh, please contact the, the board of selectmen's office. And as soon as I get out of the, the fistful of names, uh, we'll get started with discussions. Uh, even before the committee is actually seated, we, we can we can converse, phone call, emails. Um, and we'll get started right away. That's important. 
Okay, we have a motion and a, and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? It'll be five to zero. Well, good luck with that committee. Hopefully that helps. Okay. I don't see this on the agenda, but we do have a request from the um, um, a board vote open the recycling center for three Sundays. There is a need for Sunday hours in the recycling center for leaf disposal. Um, so we're requesting the board of selectmen to vote to open the recycling center for an additional Sunday hours, November 5th, November 12th, and November 19th for leaf disposal as has been done in the past years. Chairman, I believe Arthur is as an amendment to that. Okay. Yeah, I think given the circumstances of the last day or day and a half with the storm and the amount of uh, wood that has come down, the number of trees that have been cut up, um, that we take uh, this immediate coming Saturday and extend the hours from 9 to 2 to 9 to 5 to give people an opportunity to get some of the uh, uh, tree limbs and things in the brush cleared out of their houses and um, this way they don't have to rush to, um, you know, to some people have, that are available Saturday and not available Sunday and vice versa. So I think we give them a little extra time. It's um, not an insurmountable cost to the uh, town. It's, I'm going to guess it's less than $400 to keep it open. Okay. So is that in the form of motion to yes, add that? Yes, I'll make that in the form of motion. Okay. You have a second? Second. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So in Any addition to this Saturday being open at 5, the recycling center will be open on Sunday, November 5th, 12th, and the 19th. Right. That's Good. the motion that I believe he just got carried out. Right. Uh, we have the um, vote to accept the minutes of October 16th. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that the board accept the minutes of the selectmen's meeting of October 16th as written. Second. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I also uh, vote to accept the minutes of October 24th. And Mr. Chairman, I would also move that the board accept the minutes of October 24th of the selectmen's meeting as written. Second. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? <coughs> Do we have any old business? Mr. Chairman, I have a couple things in our old business. Okay. I just want to give you guys an update on that project I was talking about a few weeks back to help care for the parcels of land in town that aren't currently being intended to properly with the assistance of the Chamber of Commerce and some other folks around town. Sabrina and I have put together a list of ideal candidates in terms of those parcels, and we're in contact with the Chamber of Commerce, so we should get the ball rolling on that very soon. Uh -huh. uh, anything else? Yes, one other thing. For the folks that are watching at home, this new committee to look into the building of the future of Pembroke, the new police building, the new fire building, other buildings, a great opportunity to get involved in town. There are also many other openings and on many other boards that are doing important work. So for anybody who wants to be involved, give Sabrina at the town, call, town hall a call and she'll set you up. <coughs> awesome. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yep. I believe this is appropriate under old, old business. Uh, it, as you know, I'm a member of the the delegate to the Old Colony Planning Council. And uh, I was at the meeting on Wednesday. We were discussing the direct technical assistance grant uh, that was offered to the town of Pembroke that the planning board took advantage of. Uh, the planning board and the Old Colony Planning Council uh, did a study on what business owners need to know to successfully open and expand business in Pembroke. So there's a packet that will shortly be on the town website that's available for uh, anyone that wants to open a business 
in Pembroke and it, it assists them navigating the town boards committees um, and uh, the, the red tape as it is to easily uh, get through the town of Pembroke to open a business to encourage business in town and uh, you know I commend the planning board and uh, Matt the planning director upstairs uh, for seeking this grant out and working with the old colony planning council and developing the, this packet it's very interesting so when it's on the town website I encourage uh, folks to, to utilize it and as an addendum to this also uh, they include a list of available commercial and industrial sites in the town of Pembroke uh, all the all the commercial and industrial sites that are available are it includes the square footage uh, the listing broker phone numbers and information so uh, if folks are interested in starting a business in Pembroke uh, it's not the made easier thanks to the planning board and the old colony planning council mr. chairman uh, to follow up on Dan's comment um, as a member of the chain board of directors newly appointed um, I'd be happy to share that with the board of directors when they meet this Friday coming up very good. I'll save you this hard copy okay. until the other one is available online. Great. Thank you. Um, town administrator's report. Yeah, I'm pleased to announce that uh, we'll be hosting here at the Veterans Hall a uh, strategic plan and retreat that'll be um, uh, set up by uh, Suffolk University, uh, the Coal Rivers, who uh, uh, emceed that. Uh, at the um, retreat that we had up at the country club five years ago and so um, we'll have two sessions one for department heads will be Wednesday morning November the 15th here at the Veterans Hall and then for all, we've invited all boards and commissions um, anybody that serves in, as a volunteer for the town of Pembroke we invite them to attend the Saturday morning retreat that will be here at the Veterans Hall uh, both sessions are going to be from 9 to 12. And so what's this? November 15th for uh, staff and uh, November 18th for uh, boards, and, boards and commission members, including you all. <laughs> that's it, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And that's here in this? Yes. Yes, sir. Actually, oh, in this room. Is there anything under the other selectmen? Anything under new business? Okay. I think it's 7.30. Mr. Whisker over 7.30. And we have um, the animal control office here, William Hart. And it's uh, mm -hmm. we have a police report of an incident on October 5th. 2017 of a tan white pit bull, greyhound, mixed breed male, and the owner being Brian Shea of 174 Furnace Lane. Um, we're going to have a dog hearing. And uh, we'll wait till everybody gets in the room, I guess. Okay, um, are you going to do the swearing in, uh, Sabrina? Yes, sir. Okay, all parties who plan to give testimony in this hearing must be sworn in at the opening of the dog hearing under the provisions of Chapter 140, Section 157 of the General Laws. <coughs> all right, so, anyone planning to give testimony tonight? Would you please rise? We all want to push, please rise. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to have a little bit of a little bit of a Richard. Is there anybody else in the room that's going to testify? Kathy. Kathy, I'm so sorry. What's your last name, Kathy? C-R-C-Y-R. Okay. Yeah. Sir? No, I just saw another person from Furnace Lane come in, but... Chief, are you going to testify? Mandy? 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 Okay, you just have to get sworn in, that's all. Yeah. 
from uh, the animal control officer, uh, Bill Hatt. Hello, gentlemen. Hi. Greetings. Okay, I was out on sick leave when this happened, so Lisa took the original reports, Lisa Colley, the okay. animal inspector. Yeah. But um, what had happened was uh, that um, the let me have the names here. Uh, Brian Shea's pit bull, the one that was in the attack in uh, uh, April of this year, uh, got loose and uh, killed another uh, another dog in the neighborhood um, that belonged to uh, Laura Carville. Carville? No, it belonged to. No, the other one. Oh, the other one. Yes, it didn't belong to me. No, that's okay. Foster. Yep. Okay. Um, and got got two stories. One from Brian Shea and one from um, uh, Laura's pe uh, husband. I don't know. I don't have it. Uh, Richard. And they were pretty close. Uh, I got another one from the vet's office, which was said that uh, the dog was on a leash. Originally, I was told that. The little dog went out onto the uh, uh, street for cul-de-sac, and uh, Brian's dog got loose and went out and attacked it and killed it. Um, my my thing that I want here today is I want to see that uh, this dog is uh, labeled as dangerous. This is the second attack and killed in, in six months. The first one was in uh, uh, April, April 4th. Uh, I want them labeled as uh, dangerous. I want an order for me to take them and hold them for the 10 days while he has a chance to um, uh, go to court and uh, I don't want to come up with the right word, but so he has a right to appeal it. And at the end of 10 days, uh, I don't want the dog in Pembroke any longer. The dog is dangerous. It's this is twice in six months that it's uh, killed other dogs. I don't think we should keep it. Okay. Do you have anything else? Or? No. It's it's about it. Like I said, I wasn't I wasn't here for the initial attack. I was here um, after I, I found out about it, and I, I went and got the information from uh, from Lisa and and everything else. That's why I don't even have an incident report. But I'm sure. Um, no, the police department didn't do an incident report on me either. No, they did. Officer Reddy did? did? Yeah. Did they do one? Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if they did or they didn't. Officer Reddy did a uh, report. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, is, he, is he around tonight, Chief? Next to Daisy. Next But I don't think we, um, we should trust the dog. And we can't really trust the owner because this is the second time in six months. And I don't know if you're familiar that four or five years ago, his uh, dog Smokey killed another dog in the neighborhood. That's that dog is gone That's and deceased now. You know it. Okay. So. I'm sorry. What's your name? Brian Shea. Mr. Shea, you didn't swear. You weren't swearing. I didn't know Mr. Shea. Go ahead, Al. Sorry. Okay. So that's why I think that uh, this dog should be labeled as dangerous. And, He's, he's, he's going to be uh, dangerous to anybody in that neighborhood. Okay. Okay? All right. I have a question for Mr. Hart. Okay. Can I ask him a question? Just uh, back in April, mm -hmm. the first incident that was brought before us. Yes. My uh, memory tells me that the conditions that this board laid down on the owner of the dog was that it would be walked twice a day at specific no. times? 
No. No. Oh, no. That's that's a different. That's a different. That's case. a different one. Yeah, that was a different okay. case. Okay. That was a different. Do we case. have? You're talking. You're talking about one on the other side of town. All right. Do we have conditions that were uh, established after the first incident with um, this dog? Yeah. There it is. Right there was a letter sent out. Originally. Yeah, there was a letter sent out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what we need back at that. Yes, he did. There was one sent out. Um, yes. I don't. I don't see whether he received it or not. But um, yeah, there, there, but there was, was a letter one. that was sent out to him and explained everything. And yep. Okay. That we had here. That we, that we had, had had the hearing. But like I said, I wasn't. I I wasn't on duty. So um, the dog is vaccinated and coming for rabies. That wasn't an issue. Um, but. Um, my feeling is, is the dog is, um, it's, the owner can't, can't control it. It's the second time it broke loose, and both times that it broke loose, it killed another small dog. So I, uh, I don't see it being a, a good situation in that neighborhood. He, he, uh, he did receive that letter. He signed for it, yes. Yeah. So okay. he did receive it. Okay. Well, Bill, in these cases, that we have a hearing on. Mm -hmm. uh, this board relies on you and the police officer or Lisa Collidy mm -hmm. or whoever was at the scene and we read your reports or their reports, whatever it is. Yep. And uh, that, that uh, gives us all of the information that we have seen. We weren't there, right. of course. Absolutely. So we depend on those reports and the facts as they are given to us in that mm -hmm. report. Yep. So um, your recommendation that you've just given us, is that your official That's recommendation? My official recommendation is that the uh, dog be seen dangerous. Um, he, has a, he has a right under law to appeal mm -hmm. to um, uh, Plymouth District Court um, the findings of, of, of you gentlemen. And uh, it's a 10-day process. He has a right to appeal. If we, I want to take the dog, hold the dog for that time that the appeal go, or if any appeal comes out. And at the at the end of it, if the court changes your decision, I, I'm going to have him pay restitution to whatever whatever charges we have for board and taking care of the animal for the time until it's either released or we decide what's going to happen to it. Deemed dangerous, the dog's not going to be adoptable. It's just not going to be adoptable. It's one of these things that the only way it will be able to be adopted is it has to be to some organization or to a town, a person within a town, and the town, like you gentlemen, have to authorize the dog to come into town. And after it's already killed two dogs here in Pembroke, I don't foresee very many towns writing an authorization or giving them, taking the liability of uh, taking this dog into their uh, into their town. Okay. Thank Good. you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we would like to hear from the um, Laura Ann Cavilla. You are the you are the owner of the dog or the no, I, or the. I was fostering for Yorkies Inc. Kathy owns the agency. Okay. I've been fostering for two years. Um, how far back do you want me to go? Uh, we're, the only thing we're really concerned with is this incident. Okay, because I can tell you about his owning his dog smoking and how that went. Yeah. Just to show you some background, but I I don't have to tonight. Yeah. Okay, I've been we've been living now. I I'm gonna stop back. This, from the very this happened on on um, October fifth. That's correct. Right. So whatever transpired on October fifth, that's what we'd like to know. That's about. what you'd like to know. You don't want yeah. me to go back to what I witnessed no. in yeah. April. No. Okay. All right. So I foster these little dogs. I don't know if you care to see the picture of little Mari. Would you care to see a picture of her? Sure. That's fine. Sure. This is little Mari. She lived in a cage for two years. She was going to be adopted. 
She's laying out enjoying the sun. Mm -hmm. So I was working on that Thursday and I came home from work for lunch and her little bed and everything was packed up on the side of the kitchen. And I knew Kathy wouldn't come and pick up the dog because she doesn't even know where I live and she usually calls me and we meet somewhere and I trade off the dogs. So she didn't come running, she usually comes running. And so anyway, I walk into the house and my husband's in the bedroom and he's crying. He's sorry because, you know, Brian Shay's dog mouth little Mary. So I didn't want to hear anything from my husband. I just wanted to know where the dog was. He said, it's down at Dr. T's. I went down to the vet. She was already dead. Cardiac arrest. I held her for a little bit and that was it. And I haven't been really able to eat or sleep or I'm just sick to my stomach over this little dog. I don't think that I or anybody on my street has to live in fear. The dog is dangerous. He does not walk it. In all fairness to the dog, it's in his home all day long. This summer, it was in his home all day long with no air conditioning, no windows open, howling all day long. It's unfair for that dog, too. The dog has to leave Pembroke. If whatever transpires, the 10 days, whatever, I want the dog <coughs> off the street. And I'm going to ask you, please, 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 remove the dog from our street. Mr. Shea is not a good dog owner. I'm not a good dog owner because Mary's dead today, okay? We're both not good dog owners. I'm not going to foster anymore, and I think that he should have to be rid of this dog. And I know that he can go back out in two weeks and buy another dog. I know he can do that. But we'll deal with that when that happens. Okay, thank you. Okay, and the uh, husband, Richard? Um, I had Mari out in the backyard uh, that day, October 5th, and she was sitting on the cushion on my wall. Uh, phone rang. I, it was a nice day. The screen was open, the slider. Went in the house, answered the phone, had my coffee with me, threw the coffee in the microwave, warmed it up, took the call. This all happened in a span of 30 seconds, 45 seconds. And then I heard a yelp, and I knew it wasn't a good bark. Um, and so I immediately stopped what I was doing, went out the front door, and encountered Brian Shea working his way up my driveway. Um, Brian said something to the effect, um, your dog's just been bit. I think it's in shock, um, and I started calling him an a-hole, and followed him. He turned around, walked down the driveway, leading me to the dog. I followed him. The dog was on his property, um, and the dog had a puncture wound in its side and was bleeding. I picked up the dog immediately. Uh, repeatedly called him. He tried to engage me in conversation. I had nothing to say to him other than what I told you previously. And then I brought the dog into the kitchen, grabbed some paper towels, blanched the wound. Um, I could tell the dog was in shock. Um, uh, ran out to the shed, grabbed a shed towel, uh, wrapped the dog in a towel, and fortunately a uh, veterinarian is five minutes down the street. Grab the keys, threw the dog in the car, and down to the vet. And within 10 minutes from the time I heard the yelp, she was at Dr. T's. And then before I had a chance to make a decision as to whether I wanted to have her resuscitated and have surgery performed, uh, cardiac arrest, and the dog could not be resuscitated. And I just want to say in closing, as being the person that was there at the scene, um, two other items I can add, that time of the year, the way the sun shines, uh, the dogs tend to uh, naturally seek the sunshine, and at that time of the day, the sun was only shining 
down on the second half of the driveway where it meets the common area. So Mari is always within my sight, but I, I claim guilty for letting her out of my sight for 30 or 45 seconds. And she went down to the driveway as soon, which I've seen her do before, and lay on the asphalt and soak up the sun. Um, we've had other dogs that do the same thing. Um, in the morning, they go down by the pond. The morning sun, they lay in the grass and they soak up the sun like a lizard. Um, so I can't say as a witness that Mari was actually on Brian's property. So it would be his word against mine if he chose to dispute that. But I believe with that end of the driveway being a common area between my neighbor across the street and Brian, that the dog has every right to be down the end of my driveway. And I think he had an, he had an unregistered vehicle parked between the line of sight where he was with the dog. At first, I was told that he had the dog under his control. He's a six foot man, you can see, 200 pounds plus, and telling me that the dog broke free. That's not good. If, if, if a guy like that can't control the dog at, with that size. And then I heard the second version of the story that the dog was not under control. Now I think Mari, being a little toy that she is, that the dog caught sight of the movement underneath his unregistered vehicle, and it didn't matter whether it was a squirrel or anything, but it just, that's what it's made to do, and it bolted, and it dragged it, and it just so happens where it dropped it landed on his property. That's what I believe happened. Um, and then in closing, I just want to say, as a homeowner living next door to Brian, I don't think that I should, every time I go in my yard, have to carry a phone and a can of mace or horn spread with me. Okay? Thank you. And excuse me, I do have some, I know I'm not... Well, just hang on a second here now. I just want to ask the board if the board has any questions for you while you're up there as a witness. So, I do have one question. Sure. Is, did you see the dog off of your property someplace else, or was it always on your property? I've seen the dog before. No, no, no. This was at this incident. At this, this incident? Yeah. No. So no. You, you didn't see the dog where it was then? I didn't bring the dog out that often, to be honest with you, just to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And I either had the dog on a leash, or there were times, now I do want to add this. Brian has a company truck, or he did, yeah. okay? He works for a plumber. So he has a white pickup truck with a company insignia on the truck. The truck comes and goes on a fairly regular basis. It leaves at 6 o'clock in the morning, and it comes back at 4 p.m., roughly, okay? That being said, that was a weekday, okay? And the truck was not there. So I plead guilty that I assumed he was at work. Now, that didn't have any effect on my decision to bring Mari out without a leash. But the fact of the matter remains that his truck was not there. So. When I heard the yelp, yes, subconsciously, I was very surprised to see him coming out because I thought he was at work. And then it turns out that for whatever reason, he wasn't. Yeah. And he didn't have his company truck. But that didn't affect my decision as far as how the events unfolded that day. Right, but the, the question is, did you see the dog leave your property or did you see no. it on somebody else's property? That, at that time? At yeah. that incident? Yeah. No. No. The dog, like I said, was on the cushion on my wall right outside my deck when I went in the house. No, 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 I'm talking about after you heard... The yelp. After you heard the yelp, you went out there to recover the dog and bring it in the house. Where was it when you saw it? The dog was on his property on the front end on the other side of his unregistered vehicle. Okay. Yes. His dog okay. took it back to... So it was on his property? Yes. Did your dog have a leash on it? No. Okay. Is anybody else on the... Did you see my dog? Now, hang on a second. You'll have your shot. All right. Um, does anybody else on the board do you have any questions? Or Richard? What time of the day did this all take place? Uh, oh, I want to say somewhere around 10.30, quarter of, of 11 in the morning. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Yeah. You said that you had something else you wanted to add? Uh, I wanted to add that 
We live on a dead-end street. My husband's retired. It's a very, very quiet neighborhood. Mr. Shea would leave early in the morning and come back. My husband was very, we were very careful with the dogs when Mr. Shea's van was in the yard because we knew Mr. Shea was home and we knew his dog might be out. So it doesn't bring her back. It's not an excuse. But this is why, you know, Richard might have went in the house. She was out in the back. We would never leave her unattended. But we did. Okay. Is there anybody else now that that wants to uh, I mean, add anything to the story? Yeah. Sure. You want to get up here, please? Sure. You can vote. Just you identify can. yourself so that so that we know who you are. My, yeah, she was. She was uh, Laura was there as well. My name is Amanda Monte. This is Carissa. Carissa. Right. My dog was also attacked and died from his injuries on April third. Uh, he was on a leash, and he was attacked. And Mr. Shea's dog was not. I was walking her two dogs, her two small dogs, um, each on a leash to the end of the road. Um, we had turned around and were on our way back. And uh, we turned around, I looked back, and I was probably in front of her house. And I noticed a dog bolting, just running straight towards us out of his front yard. And I tried to move quickly, it was just upon us, instantly just looked right at her dog, Miles, and just attacked him, grabbed him, bit him. It was a very long process. I was screaming. Um, I was trying to get the dog off of him. I got bit. Uh, both of my hands were bit. I fell. Um, I could not get the dog off. Um, I work with This animals. was in April, right? April, sir. This was in April. I work Does this have anything to do with this incident? This is the same dog that killed. No, I know, I understand that, but I mean. She was the one walking my dog for me, just to show how he's up. Right. Oh, no, we understand that. We have that other report. Mm -hmm. right. uh, from we're just, you know, concerned. From that incident. Well. Yeah, I've we, worked with dogs, and I've seen dog aggression before. This is definitely a dog aggressive dog. Yeah. Um, I don't feel safe walking on the street personally, and especially if I have a dog with me. I do, with walking her other dog now, I do not feel safe. Um, I always carry mace on me, and I still don't feel safe with that. I've seen many, I work with animals, I've been a dog trainer, I work for a nonprofit animal shelter, and with animal control dogs and loose dogs, and I've seen many instances of dogs fighting. This was very, very bad. Um, it was intentionally, he was trying to kill the dog I had, um, and I screamed and screamed for help. He never came out. It seemed like the longest time. Um, the dog had absolutely nothing on him, no leash, no harness, no collar, no anything. And he finally came out and tackled the dog. Um, and they helped me. I, they were calling me to their house so I could get away. And I was pulling the dogs. And then he got loose again from his grasp, came over, attacked the dog again. Um, and he finally was able to get him off again. And then they gave me a ride with dogs. And okay. Miles died from his injuries that night. Okay. He suffered for eight hours. Any of the other suckers have any questions? I'd just like to hear the testimony beginning to end. To be honest with you, to keep it going. That's just how I feel. What do you mean? The testimony from everyone who wants to speak. Oh, sure. Oh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. When, when she was being bit and going on, I heard, help, help, help. I went outside, and Mr. Shea was down on all fours trying to hold the dog down. That's that's how aggressive this was. Were you yelling was. and screaming at the whole time? I was yeah. just so aggressive. All right, all right. Exactly, I was Excuse me. Excuse me. Because I was You're outraged. Good. Excuse me. We're this is going to be an orderly meeting, and I know everybody's upset, and the you know, and you you know you feel bad about all this stuff, but I don't want it to get it to get out of control. Right. But all right. Yes, everybody I'm is going to have their opportunity, and they will go through me. There will be no back and forth stuff. Okay. You'll address the board, uh, which I'm the chairman, and ask to speak. I will allow you to come up to the microphone and speak. Everybody's going to have that opportunity. Otherwise, than that we're not going to have this room get into a uh, fisticuffs in there or whatever. So it's going to be nice and calm. I want to hear everybody's comments 
and questions or answers or whatever to this incident. It's a very concerning thing for me. I, Mr. Hat. I, I think a lot of the testimony you're going to hear, uh, Mr. Bolter, is explaining the dangerousness of the dog. I understand the that. The dog is. Yep, I fully understand that, but everybody has a right to speak and, um, and not to be interrupted. So, um, would you like to come up and just um, address yourself? Uh, to the board and uh, tell us what. Yes, my name is Sandra Simon. I live on Furnace Lane now for the past 37 years or so. And in um, living in that neighborhood so long, I, I've um, met a lot of my neighbors, and we all are a lot of um, dog owners, and we walk the dog in the neighborhood. But it seems now we are all warning each other of the public danger of the Shea dog not to go down that part of the neighborhood with our dogs for fear that they might have the end of these poor pets owners behind me and had to watch their dogs get killed right before their eyes. So I wanted the board to know what the impact of the shade dog has had on our neighborhood and how we don't feel safe in our own neighborhood anymore. And um, and just um, would like the board to um, realize and perhaps protect us from what we consider a dangerous animal. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any questions? No, I just no. have a statement. Uh, no. this far as it goes with the hearing thus far, and that is that once we're made aware of the uh, dangers of a dog uh, through the animal control officer and through the neighbors, um, we have an obligation uh, to take uh, that uh, the two incidents, and it, it may be a third one. Uh, you know, Brian's always been a gentleman as far as uh, any encounter I've had with him, but um, he's obviously not a good dog owner. And I think that um, we're reaching a point where we have to take Bill's recommendation to uh, take the dog and, uh, you know, you either find him a home or he finds that uh, he's put down. That's I agree with that, too. I just would like to hear from everybody before we make that final decision. But, I mean, that's the way it's leaning. Is there anybody else that would like to come up, please? A severe incident. Yes. Um, we live two houses down. Just identify yourself, please. That's it? Just oh, I'm Thomas Lemaire. I live on Furnace Lane. Okay. Um, one house down from uh, Bernie. And, um, That's my nickname. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That's okay. That's how I know. <laughs> okay. uh, one morning, we have two dogs. I let them outside, and um, I heard some barking. I didn't see what happened. Uh, There's no severe injuries, but I came on uh, my back porch and Brian's dog, which I didn't even know it was his dog at the time because uh, I'm new to the neighborhood, but he was attacking one of my dogs and I quickly broke it up and um, the dog ran the other way and kind of started running the other way and came out. I had no idea where he came from and um, I, he, he ran off my porch and uh, my other dog, I would notice later that day, I didn't see what happened, but he had some bite marks on his ears, nothing severe, but I couldn't, uh, can't say that I saw him bite it, but it happened to, all happen that morning. I heard okay. some barking and stuff, so, uh, yeah. and I, I don't know um, if Brian personally at all, but just, I, I know Bernie and them, so that's how I, uh, I'm aware of this whole situation. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah. Is there anybody else? Sear. I own Yorkies Inc. I've been doing dog rescue for over 15 years. 13 of those have been with Yorkies Inc. I'm the sole proprietor and owner of that rescue. Um, I don't know any of you. The only person really I know are actually Barr and Rick who have fostered me for the last couple of years. I have no connection with anyone. I've only been told the stories that I've been hearing before we came in here tonight. This poor woman lost her dog in April. It seems like really nothing was done but sent a letter. She's got a court pending case, which he's not responding to, this Brian Shea. I do not know him from a hole or Adam either. This woman has been bitten. She's got something on her arm, I, her hands. I assume that her dog walking business has taken effect by her injuries. Two new people in the neighborhood have the reason why they have a less severe incident is because they actually own German Shepherds. 
that's a little bit different than owning a Yorkie. Her little Shih Tzu, I believe, Pekingese, is under 20 pounds. Mari was under five. There's been two incidences in the past two or three weeks in the news that you should be very, very concerned over. One is a Dudley man whose dog, who's been aggressive, has not mauled or killed, has just attacked a couple of dogs in the neighborhood, and a postman, I believe. That dog has been impounded since August and has been kept at the kennels, at the pound, where he has to go and visit his dog. That dog is slated to be euthanized, and he has a hearing pending that. That just made the news a couple of nights ago. Prior to that, in Lowell, there was two pit bulls behind a fence. A little boy, seven years old, went up, and I don't know if you know any, any of these incidents that are hitting the news, went to pet the dogs, and the dogs mauled him. That's behind a fence. It doesn't matter whether Mr. Shea puts a fence, starts walking his dog on a leash, becomes completely responsible. I love dogs. I do not want to see any dog euthanized. But more importantly, I don't want to see any innocent dog or any innocent human or child be mauled or, or having to be euthanized because of another aggressive dog. I do anything in my power to save animals. That's what I was doing with Mari. These people are wonderful dog owners. They've been wonderful foster people. They are responsible dog owners. He's saying it wasn't quite an incident. Well, it wasn't quite an incident because it was a German Shepherd. There's now two little children living across the street from Laura and Rick who are one and two years old. Were you in this town going to wait till it happens to a human before you take responsibility, get that dog off the streets? You don't pawn it off on another person or send it to another town. This dog is aggressive and will do it again. These dogs can't be rehabbed. Believe me, I do rescue. We've got top dogs 10 pounds and under, and when we have a dog that's completely aggressive and attacks for no reason, with no, uh, it, no one's antagonizing it, no one's uh, taking food or, or toys away from it, this dog simply wants to attack. You can't stop what is instinctively happening with this dog. I feel horrendous about it. But in rescue, you know some dogs you can't save. And I feel as though this dog doesn't need to be taken away. This dog needs to be euthanized for the safety of your town, your people in your town, or the people you decide to pawn this dog off on. This dog is not rehabable. I'm sorry. I Believe me, I know I wish you could do. I wish it didn't happen to one of my own dogs. This is the first time in my 15 years that we've ever had a dog mauled. When I ever found out the dog had done it previously and was let to live in a yard without a fence, I was like, you've got to be kidding. You've got to be kidding, Laura. This, is, this is, can't, can't be happening. And she says, nope, and he's had a dog previous that was also aggressive. I don't know any of that as factual. The only thing I do know as factual is what you've been told, and they've all made an excuse for their behavior. She, you know, she's saying, well, I tried to get the dog off and this. He's saying, I left the dog for a second. He's saying it's not a really bad incident. This is all the same exact dog that's attacking for no apparent reason. And no one seems to address, I don't care whether Mr. Shea is a responsible dog owner. He doesn't have control over this dog, nor will any of you or anyone who's going to rehab this dog, sadly. That that is what you're dealing with. And before you get a Dudley or a Law, Law, uh, Lowell incident in this town, you better take note, because now I have. So if something doesn't happen, it's going to be on you. If this happens again, and this is an innocent, another innocent dog, or an innocent human, or a postman, or a federal, there's going to be lawsuits, because now it's happened multiple times. How, for one dog, for one Pitbull mix? I don't understand why everyone's just saying, well, let's see what happens. Let's give them a this and let's give well, them a we that. Have, we haven't made any decisions about anything yet. I'm so I'm giving you, like I said, I yeah. don't know any one of you. I'm yeah. going to turn around and And that's your opinion. Away, so just wait to matter. see what we it get to say about it. My dog's dead. <laughs> yeah. That dog that was supposed to be given a chance at life will never get yeah. that chance. You're, you may, you have to make a decision. I'm telling you, even with the dog officer, 
this, this dog is not a let's get him in to the shelter and let's give him to another a rescue. I, we don't take five pound dogs that are aggressive like that. You're talking about a pit mix. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Well, so I euthanized my dog, dog the first time else. he bit. First Sadly. time. Yeah. First time Sadly. he bit. We'll don't, you don't give these dogs opportunity, opportunity. No. And it doesn't matter to me what Mr. Shea wants or what he doesn't want. It, this is the dog. No, and we're just hearing. We're, we're just I trying to hear all the one. evidence. And that's I'm all. I'm just saying, like I said, I have nothing to win or yeah. lose here. I walk away tomorrow. I'm not even from this town. Yeah. Believe me, I'm we'll just take. Saying, I listen to the whole thing and I'm like, wow. Yeah. This Believe is me, crazy. we will. This we will definitely uh, do the right thing. This isn't Dudley. You you have a chance to make it not a Dudley or not a Lowell or something like that. That's all I want to yeah. say. Thank you. Thank you. Chief, uh, do you have any comments? Uh, can you have any input into this? No. No. Okay. Can we hear from uh, Mr. Shea. Yeah, I'd just like to reiterate, um, Mr. Shea is going to give testimony. I don't want any any um, comments from the audience, I and I and I don't want any comments from you back to them. Please address me as the board. And um, I apologize for my behavior. Okay, thank you, sir. First of all, I'd like to say I'm sorry about the incident that happened on April fourth. Um, we were out in my backyard. Really pretty good with stick close. I had turned around and he got the corner on me and apparently they were in the in the cul-de-sac area or wherever they were. And my dog ran after his dog, or her dog, excuse me. And, and, and subsequently ended up dying. And I'm very sorry. I grew up with Pekinesis. It was like looking at my dog. Um, and as far as the second incident goes, you know, I'm really glad they pointed out that they know when my, when my truck is there and when it's not there and all that stuff. These dogs were trained to go crap in my yard. My dog had been eating dog shit since his arrival. I thought it was duck shit. I really didn't know. The little dog came down the hill. I was standing with my dog and the dog went after it. And that's the truth of the matter. And they can say whatever they want. I'm very sorry. I. My dog would not harm a human. Um, he just doesn't like squirrels and little dogs. <laughs> and, and that's all I have to say. I will do whatever the town asks. And that's it. I just hope to keep my dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boy, I have, I have a question, uh, Mr. Shea. Uh, did I understand correctly oh. that and you also, they brought up Smokey. This is the letter that I got after they ran over Smokey and left him for dead in the driveway. This harassment's been going on for a long time. I haven't been able to have cable in two years. I keep shutting them off. They're just awful neighbors. You shut and off your cable? I don't want to go into it any further. My cable comes down on their property. And it's just got to happen. Okay. Anybody? Yeah, I, I had a question. Yeah. Uh, did I understand your description, Mr. Shea, that you were out with the dog in your backyard? In both incidences, yes. On that day? Yes. Okay. Now, the dog, both days. The dog was loose. He wasn't on a leash. The second, no. No, he wasn't. He was okay. good, but you were there. Sport. Yes, standing next to him. You were right times. there. It doesn't, my dog shouldn't do what he did. Okay. Now, when, before he attacked the dog. Which dog? The case we're talking about now. The little dog? Okay, yes. Yeah, the little dog. 
where, where, did you see where the little dog was when your dog went after him? It was about 9.30 in the morning. It was my first day I, in the process of changing jobs. It was my first day home. I brought the dog out. He craps in the corner, in the very front corner of my lot. I was standing next to him. All of a sudden he raised up. I looked up. The little dog was coming down the hill. I ran after him, I tackled him, I bit him maybe three times, and it was over. I'm still trying to understand where the little dog that was attacked he was, in my side. was when your dog attacked him. He was in my side yard. In your yard? Yes, sir. Is that what you mean by coming down the hill? It was, yeah. you know, the it's hill. like kind of a boat ramp. And there was an unregistered truck in there. It's since been removed. Okay. There's got nothing to do with the dog though, right? Mm -hmm. I will keep him locked down. You know, in the summertime he's in the cellar, it's nice and cool in there. Just to rebut her. Anybody else have any questions? He's allowed and another thing. Yeah. If you look at a plot plan. My dog is only allowed in the front third of my yard. I don't even allow him in two thirds of my yard that abuts their house. I walk him at 8.30 at night when people are watching their shows. I try and keep him away from other dogs. And that's what I can say, and I will do whatever you ask. Any questions? Yeah, you'll um, you'll do anything for the neighbors or anything that we require. Uh, I'll do anything. I was that way. I we do. have an obligation, Brian. You, you have to understand that. I think. Oh, this, I understand. This two dead dogs. The uh, nonprofit group understand. brought it up. We we have an obligation to the children that are mm -hmm. you know waiting for school buses and things. I can take the food right out of his mouth when he's eating it. The only thing yeah. he's allowed to chew now is a ball and a rope. Yeah, but you can't, you know, we as a board can't, in my opinion, we can't trust the dog. That It's my recommendation that you give it up. Uh, I can't speak for the board members. They'll vote however they feel. But I believe you've got a dangerous situation, and, and it's just a... I don't believe so. I believe if he's restrained, he's, he's well-loved. He has my son and my daughter. We'll keep him under lockdown. He will be under lockdown forever. He will never be unleashed. Yeah, but you've got the off chance that somebody leaves the back door open or, you know, you've got to... We've had these conversations with my son and my daughter about locking doors and keeping windows so he can't go out them. We will do whatever we need to do to keep the neighborhood and my dog safe. But, you know, these people, they did train their dog to crap in my yard and they knew it would only be a matter of time. And if that's not animal cruelty, I don't know what is. Okay. Do you have anything else to add to? No, sir. Okay. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Come on. Since he wants to bring up that incident, I have to clear my name. Okay? okay. He got a dog smoking. It was a little lab. It was a harmless dog. When the dog was not a year old, him and his wife decided they're going to go skiing in February. They leave the dog. Around 11 o'clock in the morning, this little dog is running around. It's snowing. We bring it into our house. At the time, I owned a little Yorkie. I fed it. I gave it water. I dried it off. I let it sit in the house all day. Now it's coming nighttime, him and his wife aren't home. What are we going to do with the dog? We take the dog, we put it in our basement. Near the furnace, Rick gets rags and things, puts it there. Next morning they're still not home. So we get up and bring the dog back in. I feed the dog. Around 11.30, him and his wife get home. And you know what they say? Oh, well, we knew somebody would take care of it. So that dog was our dog. It was in our yard. My husband would wash it, we gave it food, we watered it. Brian knows this, okay? I don't know what he's talking about a cable company. I have no idea what he's talking. 
Now, the dog gets very old. The dog, he actually had a collar, and the dog catcher knows how many times he had to go catch the dog. But the dog actually, would, the collar was enough to come over to our yard and sit and lay in our grass under our shady trees, okay? Now, the dog is old, and the dog is blind, and it's deaf. And it comes through his hedges. My husband's backing out to go to work. He taps the dog. Yes, the dog went down. I called Brian right away. He had just left. He turned around. I'm crying. I'm all upset. Don't worry. The dog is old. Don't worry. The dog is put down. We took better care of Smokey than he took care of Smokey. We don't know what happened with us and Mr. Shea. All of a sudden now he's not talking to us. We have nothing to do with his cable. We don't touch his cable. We don't do anything with his cable. We have quiet people. We want to live. Our, we just want to live a normal existence. We bought a house here in Pembroke. That's all we want to do is live a quiet life. So that dog is not staying on that property. It's not staying on that property. If I end up in jail, the dog is not staying in the town of Pembroke. I'll call Channel 4, I'll call Channel 7, and I'll call Charlie Baker. The dog needs to go. He is a terrible dog owner. He'll tell you from now till Tuesday how he's going to take care of that dog, but he's not going to take care of the dog. My little Yorkies never went in his yard. We were afraid of Mr. Shea. We were afraid of his dog. My little Yorkies did not have to poop in Mr. Shea's yard. So I just want to make it clear. You know, we did have problems, and my husband may have wrote that, but we are not touching his cable. <coughs> we would not allow us to touch the cable. As a matter of fact, when we moved in, we decided to put our electric lines underground. We went over to Mr. Shea to be neighborly. We asked him, would you like to go in halfsies on paying the poll, because the poll had to be on us, our property. No, I don't want to pay for the poll. Okay, fine. Three weeks later. Yeah, you know what? I think I want to put my electric lines on your pole. You mind? No, we're neighborly people. Go ahead. Put your, put your lines on our pole. We've done nothing but try to be nice to Mr. Shea. When he was getting the dog, and this is when, I, when, the, when we called the cops, the cops said it's he say, she said. But he said to me, I'm getting a Rottweiler or a pit bull. It's going to bite you, Laura, and there's going to be nothing you can do because I have a homestead act. And I said, you know what? You don't even know what a homestead act is. And you know what? I'm in the process of trying to find out who Mr. Shea's homeowners is because his homeowners will be canceled if they know he has. That's a number five dog on the list in Massachusetts to have. You have to notify your home insurance. Let's ask Mr. Shea if he's notified his homeowners that he has that dog because you know why? He'll cancel his insurance. Yes, I'm upset and I'm very sorry, but I really... You know, I just never, ever, ever, ever thought that one of my dogs would die. And I'm just really very upset, and I do apologize. But I'm just letting you know that Mr. Shea, he's a good actor. That's all I can say. The dog is not staying on his property, and I'm not moving. Thank you. Um, I don't have to live Bill, your, um, your recommendation, um, again, was uh, to um, declare the dog dangerous and for you to seize the dog? I can seize him. I mean, I, I want to seize him. I don't want him. Uh, I don't think he should be. Uh, yeah, should, that, I don't think he should be loose. I think that. Would, I, I think th Mr. Shea has the right for his, his, everything that he has legally. He has his rights to 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 an appeal and all the different things. Yeah. But I want the dog. I want him seized, and yeah. I want him with me. And I, I would just assume if Mr. Shea surrendered the dog to me, and then. I just have the dog PTS because yeah. I think it's it's it, it, it I don't see it as being any resolve anywhere as far as giving it to another uh, uh, rescue or anything like that. I had another dog that you guys had done that to, and I went through 15 or 20 different rescues trying, and and that was a, a, a case of a bad owner as well. Yeah. It's once they once they bite, no one wants to take the liability. It's, yeah. it's just that simple, you know, and I don't think it's, I, I past histories and everything else, it's just not a good situation. Yeah, being the chairman, I can't make a, um, a formal um, motion, but my feelings are that, that we should take the recommendation of you 
mm -hmm. and, that, and that you should seize the dog immediately, mm -hmm. um, and it should stay in custody uh, and be euthanized. Yep. That would be my suggestion. Yep. I'll make that as a motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Second. Do you have any questions or comments? I do. So these dog hearings are one of the hardest things that we do as a board of selectmen. It's, it's, it's so emotional, it's so personal to both sides, uh, to, the, to the victims, to the dog owner, because they, they love their dog, it's a family pet. Uh, but there, there comes a time that we, we have to make a tough decision. Uh, back in April, uh, it was the, the first death incident of this one dog. Uh, so we took the recommendation of the animal control officer and we put on stringent uh, restrictions on the dog. Well, that didn't work. Uh, so now here we are uh, with the second incident and I think, uh, Bill, you're correct in saying it's time to seize the dog immediately. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted, uh, I expressed that, that it's a very difficult decision for us uh, every time we face one of these. And uh, I agree with the motion. So when it comes time to vote, I'll be voting in, in favor. Okay. So we do have a motion. Yeah, and it makes it makes sense from a liability <coughs> standpoint as well as a public safety standpoint to um, vote to give uh, build control of the dog. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we do have a motion, and I made a second. Uh, could I just ask before we vote? Um, if Mr. Hart could just quickly run through the procedure. If this vote passes, you <coughs> will seize the dog, yep. bring him to the pound, yep. keep him there for a Care, number of days. For 10 days, wait to see if there was an appeal. Okay. And if no appeal came from um, Plymouth District Court, then under the papers you gave me, I can have them put to sleep by a veterinarian. Okay. I just wanted to yeah. walk through that yeah. from you so that I or yeah. the other members know exactly what we're yeah. voting for. Yeah. Thank you. I want you I want you to understand too is 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 I care more for the animal than I do for the people. And the problem is is that there are bad owners. And we've had a few cases of other bad owners. I would rather euthanize the owner than the dog because most of the time the dog could, sometimes you could find another place to put the dog. But in a situation like this, you really, it's going to, it's going to be hard pressed to find anything that's going to be safe. Right. I think and we that's have the most to important thing is yeah, I think we have to recognize that as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. May yes. I ask a question? Yes. Uh, do I have to stand? Do you want me to stand? Ah, uh, please. Um, just curious, what's to stop Mr. Shea from going out next month and buying another similar type dog? Yeah, that's nothing. 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 So we'd have to go through this process. We, do we have to wait for another incident before uh, we can go through this process again? Well, I think what some of the town said is what the, the lady that got up here and testified. I think some of the towns are trying to ban uh, certain types of animals from being in the towns. Yep. Um, you know, whether it's legal or not, or the attorney general will approve it or whatever. I think maybe it's time for a town bylaw that we ban these type of dogs from here. Insurance companies won't handle them. They won't. They so won't the meantime, uh, take care of anybody's homes or anything that has these types of animals. So, so us as, um, as, as uh, residents of the town uh, to be more proactive is that something that we could initiate on a some kind of a, uh, a petition? Uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, yeah, most to, certainly you can do that. To, to uh, fast track it, it yep. only takes ten. Uh, ten signatures to get it on town meeting okay. this coming spring. Okay. Ten, is that right, Sabrina? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, just yeah. count the days before um, town meeting, which is usually the end of April, mm -hmm. so that you get it in in plenty of time so it's not thrown out on technicality. Can it be uh, worded in layman's terms, or does this have to be legalese? If you do you have time to stop in the selectman's office, I'll give you the, it's on yeah. our website too, how to file a petition article. Thank you. Yes. I do have one more question. What are the laws here in Pembroke? What what are actually the laws laws for dogs and how many bites? Well, you could probably get that on the town bylaws. Okay, so offhand, you know. It's on the website. Okay. Yeah, it's on, it's on the website. There is there is quite a few 
there is quite a few um, incidents, but this part of of the incidents here coming before the board of selectmen for a hearing, it's we make that decision whether um, we think that the dog uh, should be put down or whatever. So um, I, you know, second time around is that's that's way too much for me. Right, because we're so, living it. We're, yep. we're actually. Living I understand this. that. We, we we've had our one bite, yep. and he had his one bite. And now he's had his two bites. Yeah, and what I said earlier, I euthanized my dog because he's got <laughs> a woman that had a little dog in her hand, and I had him euthanized immediately. So it's just it's just you, something Judge. you have to do. I, I want to thank you that's, all. That's I'm unfortunate. Sorry if I feel like I'm a little hot-headed, but it's yeah. still really um, raw in me. And, yeah, know. he he has a right to appeal it and and listen to the third district court, and the mm -hmm. judge can. And as long and, um, as I, I, I want to thank you that while he's going through this process, the dog be somewhere else other than his body. It'll be I, seized by the I animal control officer. I want to thank you very much for that. That makes me feel a lot better. Yeah. Thank you. Because okay. I know nobody in their right mind is going to let him take that dog back. So I, I appreciate it and I thank you. Yep. Yeah. Okay, one, one just. Can we just, we just have one vote to make here by the board? Okay, uh, good. And I think we're ready to make our decision. We've had a, a motion and a second. All those in favor of uh, having the dog Does picked up? Does the have something that's relevant to the... Is it relevant to what we're going to vote on? Well, it was about, like, you said, the town with pickles. It had nothing to do with the dog breed specifically. It's this specific dog. So any dog he gets in the future, even if you outban pickles, it's not pickles, it's this specific dog. Any breed can be dog aggressive. Or no, we don't need a town bylaw to act what we're doing right here. Well, I was just saying, it's an owner situation where the second scenario, after he already killed the dog I was walking, he had him loose again in his yard and had no control over him. That's why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. So, um, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Hearing none, it'd be five to zero. Okay. So Just to answer Mr. Cavilla's uh, question, the only way Brian Shea could be stopped from ever getting the dog again is he'd have to go through court and he'd have to be charged with cruelty and lose his case to cruelty. And then the state and MSPCA and the different ones would have him on a list of uh, people that can't own animals again. That's the only way is, is he has to be tried for, 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 uh, for cruelty and neglect. And that's mm -hmm. not what this case is about. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Okay. Okay, thank you, Will. Yep. Thank you, everybody, for coming. So, appreciate it. Uh, we do have some upcoming issues. On uh, November 13, we have a public hearing of Board of Assessors um, about the uh, fiscal year uh, tax classification hearing. November 20th, we have a Class 1, Class 2 taxi. Uh, and precious metals license renewal. December 4th, we have a common victual license renewals. There's actually 46 of them. December 11th, there's uh, liquor licenses, which is 30. Live entertainment, which is 11. Sundays is five, and amusement device is five, and all the rest are license renewals. Uh, to be announced, quarterly meetings with the advisory board. Um, executive session. Do we have a need for executive session tonight? Yes, sir. Five minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that the board go into executive session, uh, reason number seven, to comply with our act under the authority of Mass General Laws, Chapter 41, Section 111F, Police Department. Second. 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 Uh, all those in favor by roll call? Yes. 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 No? Yes. And I'll be yes. Yeah. Um, there is um, that will conclude tonight meeting um, of uh, October 30th. Uh, Pembroke Board of Selectmen will be going into executive session, and we'll only be coming out of executive session to uh, adjourn from our meeting. So um, there'll be no other votes taken. So good night, everybody, and. Uh, See, all the leaves are falling, and uh, fall, fall is coming. So, have a good, uh, happy.